everybody and welcome to Your Money Story. I am host Renita Young and today on the show we have Lakeisha Simmons. She's an analytics professor at Belmont University in Nashville who became financially free and get this, she brought up or saved rather $750,000 in four years. That was her net worth and she's on the track to be a millionaire next year. So we're going to find out how she did did it and some of the things that led her up to this very huge change in her life. So hang on for a second. Let me invite her in. She's almost here, guys. <gasps> Dr. Lakeisha Simmons. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a lovely Friday here in New York City. How is it where you are? It is raining. It's actually uh, storming pretty good outside today. Oh my <laughs> gosh. So we have a lot of rain coming this weekend too. I'm kind of bummed out about that because of the long weekend, but it's okay because you know, we could use just the time to chill anyway. Um, but we should start with your money story. And so from what I understand, you didn't grow up with, uh, you know, a lot of wealth. A lot of us don't. Um, but you had teen moms, uh, teen parents, pardon me, um, in Indianapolis. And so tell me, what was your relationship with money growing up? Money was scarce, <laughs> to put it lightly, but we had love, right? So we had barbecues in the backyard, and for birthdays, we all got together and made dinner or made dessert. So we found ways to, even though we didn't have much money to spend, we found ways to spend time with family and still enjoy life. And so that's how I grew up with money, and that's really been my mindset with money is about experiences and then enjoy myself and treat myself every once in a while. But for the most part, uh, I like to stay pretty frugal. Stay pretty frugal. And I think it's pretty cool that you're doing that now, even though you're almost a millionaire. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, but you had a turning point um, after your first marriage ended, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that turning point? Yeah. I realized that, you know, I went to college. I was able to go to college first generation uh, because my mom, my mom dropped out of high school. My dad did graduate high school, but he went off to the Marines. And so once I went to college and got that job, I started living the quote unquote American dream. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, got the big house, got a nice car, took the vacations. But then once, unfortunately, it didn't work out with my husband, we decided that uh, I would keep the family home since the children would be with me mainly, you know, we share them, but they would mainly live with me. And I realized, oh, crap, this mortgage is 2410 a month. Mm. That's a big mortgage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you have two incomes, and you both graduated college, and you're thinking this is what you're supposed to do. This is the American dream. That's what you do. But that turning point for me was, oh, no, when I started looking at the budget and looking at the numbers, they didn't make sense anymore with my income and all the expenses. And I said, what am I going to do? And my so, goodness. And yeah. I just need to say that 2400 in Nashville back then, that's a heck of a lot more, you know, because yes. the cost of living is such uh, so much cheaper than where I am now in the Northeast. So I can only imagine how stretched you might have felt at that moment. Exactly. Very stretched. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then um, you discovered the FIRE concept. Um, tell me how you started your journey to financial freedom. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I'll never forget that evening. It was December 2016 going into the new year. And I was alone in that big house. <laughs> The boys were with their dad bringing in the new year and I was on my own and I said, what am I going to do here? Is the new year coming, going through a divorce? What am I going to do? And so I was very sad that night. I was alone. But the next day I woke up, I said, it's a new year. I've got to make a change. And I started searching the Internet and saying, you know, what can I do 
as a woman to be financially independent because I knew I didn't want to be in this situation anymore where I'm, I'm strapped for cash. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. It doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. do that. And, you know, being a professor, having a PhD, why am I living paycheck to paycheck? So mm -hmm. I started looking up, should I buy, uh, should I sell my house? Should I rent? What should I do with this house? And that's when I came across the FIRE movement. Financial independence, retire early. And if you've heard of it, type in the comments if you've heard <laughs> of the FIRE movement, because I want to know who's heard of it. And so that allowed me, and I, I just went down this rabbit hole. Renita, seriously, and I learned every single thing I could learn about the fire movement. Mm -hmm. And essentially what it means is putting your focus on investing more money instead of spending as much as you're spending. So invest more so that you can eventually live off of your nest egg that's in the stock market. That's mm -hmm. essentially what it is. And so that's what I did. And the first thing that the people in the fire movement with most of them, most of them, not all of them, most of them would say, sell the big huge house because it's just a money suck mm. right you get get something more modest or uh rent especially if you plan to travel you know or if you don't have children you might want to just rent and move around so i decided to go ahead and sell the house and rent until i could figure out what my next move was but i needed to get from under the 2400 dollars a month mortgage and reduce that expense because it was the largest expense on my budget. And so there mm -hmm. I was, I was on fire from that point on. On fire for fire. I like yes. it. And so <laughs> you also made some goals and I want to know, you picked up side gigs too, at some point, what were some of the side gigs that you had? Yes. So that, I recommend that to everyone. Think about what specific or unique skills that you have what's something that's really special about you that you can share with the world to help them and there's a that's probably your number one side hustle so for me i was a professor but i also was a woman in corporate america and i was a six sigma black belt mm -hmm. okay for caterpillar financial uh, caterpillar inc is where i got my black belt and so I decided, how can I use this to teach other women how to excel in the business world? And so I wrote a book called The Unlikely Achieve Her. Mm -hmm. And in that book, I have uh, actual pictures of me doing body language, teaching you how to hold your hands, what to do, what facial expressions to use, how to move your body to look like a leader, to exude leadership, and to run a meeting, and uh, how to negotiate which is a big one for women how do you huge negotiate? huge and so I'll put all that into the book and it's available on amazon uh plug <laughs> the unlikely achiever so that was one thing and then i started doing workshops with women to teach them these things hands-on and so you can find all those uh workshops on my website as well especially about money and so that helped me grow my nest egg because all of the extra money from my side hustle would go into the stock market so i really highly recommend that you think about what's unique for you and how you can teach others and help others and package that into your side hustle now you also cut out a lot more expenses um as well as a very personal one for us ladies and gentlemen you started to do your own hair and cut your son's hair um <laughs> <laughs> but what were some other things that you did to try to save money? Grocery shopping, things like that. Yes, absolutely. So what I recommend people do is go through your budget line by line. Put every single thing in that budget and go line by line and say, how can I reduce this? Figure out a way to challenge yourself. So one of the first things that I saw is that I was spending a lot of money on groceries. And I remember growing up, my mother shopped at Aldi and saved a lot. Mm -hmm. and everything was delicious that she made and so I said let me get back to that so I started shopping at Aldi again and they have gluten-free options they have organic produce mm -hmm. I mean I've been so happy shopping there and it just really slashes my grocery bill especially with two boys mm -hmm. um, phone bill don't be afraid of the prepaid they're they're actually good I I use a prepaid plan that I've used for several years, and I just hmm. haven't had any issues any different than I would have with, with a name brand company, okay? Mm -hmm. So think about that. You, you have to really think outside of the box with these, these sorts of things. Uh, I save a lot of money by shopping on Amazon 
for things like toothpaste, toilet paper, paper mm-hmm. towels, which I we try not to use. We use cloth, but okay. you need paper towels sometimes to clean something from the mm-hmm. floor, different things. But um, but that saves because then I'm not going to a big box store and then I end up coming out with $200 worth of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. how did that happen? <laughs> It happens. It definitely yeah. does. So th- that's pretty interesting, though. You, I'm, I'm wondering, though, it sounds like you do, but I need to hear it. Do you still do these things now that you're an almost oh, yeah. millionaire? Okay. Yes, I keep my living expenses around $36,000 a year. Wow. And that's because I decide what is important to me. What do I value? And that's what I really challenge everyone to do. Think about what you value in life. Um, do what what is it that you truly value for me i value time with family which is so interesting because that's how i grew up with those backdrop barbecue. right someone's birthday we're going over their house mm-hmm. and so that just being around each other laughing and joking or watching a movie together or award shows coming on and so since that's what i value i've figured out that shopping a lot i don't really value that i was doing it mainly because it was something to do or I just had the money or I see some advertisement and then I just go buy it, but I wasn't thinking about it. Mm. And so now I'm just more aware of what I buy and when I buy it. So I just buy things that are timeless that I can have forever that, um, you know, I'll save up for something in particular that I want so that I don't make impulse purchases. Mm-hmm. Right. But things that will last think for the boys, you know, and I'm not afraid to say this. And I've already told the boys for their summer play clothes, because summer's here, they're boys and they play hard. They do sports and I, they already know we're going to the Goodwill to get them a bunch of just T-shirts mm-hmm. and shorts to play in for the summer, you know, mm-hmm. and they're completely OK with that. They, they don't mind it. But for church clothes and things like that, we'll get something nice that will last and that will pass down to the other brother. But there's no reason to just get all expensive clothes that they're just going to get dirty. You know, absolutely. So I understand. Decisions. Very good. And just being strategic about, you mm-hmm. know, how much you value the things that, you know, you do have, where is it going, how much it needs to last. And mm-hmm. so I want to talk about your investment strategy here. Mm-hmm. You um, now, contrary to the traditional ways of building wealth, which people, many folks say are just saving, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot more people have been going the route of institutional investors and getting more invested in the stock market. And so you um, have a specific strategy that you use. What's your investment strategy? I do. This is a strategy that anyone can start with. And the first part of it is it's a three part strategy. Number one, you have to reduce your expenses. So that's what we've been talking about so far. So if you've missed that, make sure you go back and watch the replay. <laughs> You have to do that first to find money to invest. The second thing is maxing out your 401k at work. Some people have a 403b or some people have a um, 401a or there's some different options depending on where you work, but you want to max that out. And the reason is because it lessens your taxable income. So when you get your paycheck, let's say your paycheck is, you know, $5,000 for the month and you want to invest a thousand dollars into your, or let's say five hundred dollars into your four hundred one k. That comes off first before mm-hmm. taxes, so it lessens your taxable income. You actually bring more money home by investing, because then you mm-hmm. have your savings, your investing savings, and you pay less taxes today. So that helps you out that way, and then that money grows tax free until you're ready to retire. Mm-hmm. And that is gold. People are not maxing out their workplace retirement account. They're not doing it. I'm talking to people daily and they say, well, I just didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I just don't know what to invest it in. So that's how we get to part three. Part three is knowing what to invest in. So I'll just tell you what I did. You make okay. your own d- decisions. But for me, I chose the S&P 500 index fund. Okay. And I, you can also do the total stock market index fund. And then, so that's for your equities or your quote unquote stocks or equities. And then you want to kind of smooth out the ride. And so then you want to also purchase bonds and uh, there's bond funds. So you can decide your allocation. If you want to be, if you're not retiring for 20 or 30 years, you can be more aggressive with your index funds in the stock market and maybe do 
eighty-five percent uh, index funds in your S and P five hundred, and maybe fifteen percent in bonds. And as you get closer to your retirement age and building up that nest egg where you want it to be, you can scale back and do a little less equities and a little more bonds. And that just helps you so that if there is a major drop closer to the time that you're retiring, you won't see such a drop in your account. Got it. Got it. And so to do all these things, you use some very specific tools. What do you use? Yes. Yeah, so one of the tools that I use the hands down, you got to get started with is a personal capital dashboard. So personal capital. And I am so happy that they heard my story in People Magazine and they reached out to me and said, would you please be a financial hero? And I was so humbled by that. That was just, I said, me? A girl of <laughs> teen parents just, you know, struggled growing up and now I'm a financial hero. And so I love sharing this story because this, if this is going to help other people say, you know what, I can invest too, then hey, I'll be it. So personal capital has free financial tools on their website free and so i started using it in 20 i think 2018 january 2018 i think is when i started using it and it basically allows you to track you can track your spending in it you could but what i mainly use it for is tracking my net worth so i put all of my accounts in it and you can go to my website lakeishasimmons.com or in the link in my bio i um i have all kind of free tools you'll see a link that says freebies so mm -hmm. click on the freebies link and you'll see all the free tools and the personal capital tool is there and um, all the other tools that I have that will help you get started on your financial journey. Congratulations on being named the personal capital hero. You're joining the ranks of wellness icon Deepak Chopra and Baron Davis, pro basketball all-star. And so what you said how it made you feel, but what does it truly mean to you to be able to be such an ambassador? so humbled it's a it's a duty of mine i feel like this is this is a job that god has given me to do and i'm all for it because the way i grew up i grew up with very little we grew up very humble but my family they had so much love and they still and they and i want to help others get on their financial journey and reach their financial independence number, whatever that is, it varies for everyone. And so this is, uh, this is a role I don't take lightly. I don't take it lightly. And so thank you for having me here on the show so that I can share with others and help them on their journey to financial independence. Great. And I should mention that personal capital is an empower company. Empower might sound familiar because it, is a manager, fund manager. A lot of uh, retirement funds are managed through Empower. And so what I want to know also is about your book. You, you mentioned it earlier, The Unlikely Achieve Her. It's 11 Steps to a Happy and Prosperous Life. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a workbook um, for women and really uh, men can, can do it too, um, to gain more self-awareness, build self-esteem. You, you have photos of uh, body language in mm -hmm. there as well. And so you also mentioned these are these three things that you need to do every day um, to be successful and reach these goals. What are those three things? Absolutely. So first, so these are just general, in general, you have to be poised. Okay. So poise is believing in yourself, right? Poise is how you carry yourself. How, how do you stand up and um, be strong and just be poised? The second one is being persistent. Do not give up. I want people to look to the inside for their happiness. Don't look at the environment. Don't look around because if you look around and say, oh my goodness, it's stormy outside. It's such a bad day, hmm. right? And then you're going to have a bad day because those thoughts, those bad thoughts lead to bad feelings. So I want you to start from the inside and be persistent and say, you know what? I can do anything. If Lakeisha Simmons could be a millionaire from where she grew up, then surely so can I. That's what I want people to say. So mm -hmm. be persistent and don't give up. And the third one is be prosperous. And with being prosperous, that means getting the education that you need. That you can take free online classes, watch YouTube videos, do what it is you need to do 
to get the free education. On my website, I have a blog. It has tons of information, step by step, how mm -hmm. I did everything. Go read the blog. Plenty of free information to help you on your way. And so be poised, persistent, and prosperous. I like that alliteration too. And so briefly, before we get to questions, uh, you're an analytics professor. I know that background probably prepared you very well <laughs> for this transition. Am I right or no? You know, the funny thing is, when I was growing up, I never thought I was good in math. I really? always failed my math classes. In high school math, oh. it was the toughest. Freshman math, sophomore math, it took for me to change my mindset about numbers. Mm. And I hear people all the time say, oh, I'm not good with money. I'm not good with math. I'm not good with spreadsheets. That's because you told yourself you're not good with it. But when you change your mindset and say, this is something I need to learn how to do, and I need to get good at it, period. Mm -hmm. Again, being persistent. And so that's what I did. I turned it around when I learned about college. When I learned that, oh my gosh, college, I want to go there. And I said, I have to do better in math because I have to take an interest exam. And I buckled down and I did my best. And so believe it or not, now I'm an analytics professor. Who would have thought? Because I always thought I was terrible at math. I can identify. Uh, I used to think the same thing. Um, and now I'm a financial journalist. I think that's kind of funny how it works out. And so on that note, um, you uh, talk a lot about fear around money, specifically mm -hmm. what women have, you know. And so what I know is that a recent per personal capital and power retirement survey, it said 62% of single moms, they report not feeling confident about their ability uh, to be able to plan for retirement. And that's compared to around 40% um, of folks overall. A lot of that has to do with fear. Like, what is your answer, your take on um, of fear issues that women specifically have around money? Oh, yeah. This is good because I want women to turn that fear around. And, it's, and I get it. I understand why, why it's scary. I've been there. OK, especially going through that divorce from growing up and then going through that divorce and feeling that heavy weight of it. So I understand fear, but I want you to just shift that mindset and know that fear is not of not from in you. OK, that's the world. That's you looking at the environment. If you look inside yourself and you know what you are capable of, you have to put fear to the side. OK, fear will hold you back. Look at me. A millionaire? <laughs> I'm not an actress. I'm not a superstar. I'm not a singer. Mm -hmm. I'm not these things you associate with millionaires. Right. I'm a teacher because I saved and I invested and I kept at it. I was persistent, got a side hustle, invested more. You can do it too. All right. I don't want women thinking that they can't do something. You can do anything. Please mm -hmm. look at my story and see that there's nothing that I wasn't born with money. I don't come from money. Um, I'm still working to get my mother out of uh, the situation so that she can retire comfortably as well. Okay. So you can do it. That's very good. And thank you for saying that. It's so many congratulatory and thank yous in the comments. Uh, uh, they're saying, thank you so much. I needed to hear this. I needed to purchase your book. And I'm looking for a few questions. Well, one person says, is this all in your book? And maybe you can run through um, just briefly a couple yeah. of the things that I didn't mention that are in your book. Yes, absolutely. So there is a section in there on money and budgeting but the majority of the money stuff is just on my website on the blog so but it, but it is in there so the i highly recommend getting the book because i'm teaching you the skill sets that you need to run a successful business the skill sets that you need if you're in a workplace how do you become a leader do you want a promotion do you want to raise i teach you how to negotiate the raise i teach you how to give your uh your elevator pitch most people aren't doing it right just because they've never been taught so i teach you how to succinctly in four sentences, you have the perfect elevator pitch to get what you want out of someone when you meet them immediately. So um, things like how to dress for where you want to be. Don't dress for where you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what your position is today. If you want the corner office, you have to dress like the person in the corner office. Mm -hmm. So I teach you about what colors to wear. Uh, we had a debate in the book about heels or, no he or flats. Really? Right? Yeah. What was so the result of the debate? Well, you I have haven't to. finished it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 
So I'll leave that up to you to decide. But okay. I give you kind of the pros and cons of each. And uh, so the, all of that is in the book. It's just all the soft skills really that we're not taught. No one, if you mm -hmm. had a great mentor who was a leader, if, I, I, I love Oprah Winfrey, okay? If yeah. anybody knows Oprah, please connect me. But I always think, what would Lady O say? What would Lady O do? What would, really? What would, yeah, I, I love okay. her. In my mind, she is my auntie. And uh, <laughs> and she actually went to the same undergrad college I went to. And I just look up okay. to her so much because she's such a strong woman. And I look at her body language. If you've ever watched anything that Oprah does, look at her body language. Hmm. Look what she does with her hands, the way she crosses her legs, how okay. she sits. And so all those things I've studied over time, all of that is in the book. Okay. All of that is in the book. That's good. <laughs> okay. Well, we're about to wrap it up. What are your final words for people who are just starting this financial freedom journey? Easy, easy, easy. This is what you have to, well, it's not so easy, but it's an easy statement for me to give out, but it takes some practice. I want you to shift your mindset from spending to saving to investing. So we've all been taught to save, right? Oh, we should save, we should save. It goes in one ear and out the other. Well, saving doesn't really um, grow your nest egg the way I was able to grow mine so fast. You have to make sure you save for emergencies, but mm -hmm. then you have to invest. Mm -hmm. You have to invest in the stock market or invest in a business or invest in real estate. You know, maybe get a rental or buy a duplex, live in one side, rent the other side. Mm -hmm. um, you have to think about how you can make your money work for you. And, uh, and I wasn't taught that growing up. I had to learn that the hard way, right? There's several books that I read, uh, many, 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 many books. I have a book club, mm -hmm. three to ten, you know, just okay. grab, rent the book from your library, borrow the book from someone, or if you have to, buy the book off Amazon um, or wherever you can get the book. And join us on the first Friday of every month at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time via Zoom book club because this is where we talk about how you shift your mindset from spending to saving mm -hmm. to investing. Okay, that sounds good. And <laughs> thank you so much. I think that's a great place to leave it. Lakeisha Simmons, it's been a pleasure. And if you guys want to know more about Lakeisha Simmons, you can check out her IG page or LakeishaSimmons.com. Yes. And I'm Renita Young. This has been Your Money Story on Quick Take. Have a lovely holiday weekend, everyone. Thank you Enjoy so much for joining. Enjoy, everyone. Bye. Thank you.